Got back from work last night. Today is Tuesday and it's time to get back to work on the boats. This, my garage, AKA shop is too small to have a boat and another boat slash jig in here. So I gotta move some things around. I gotta take the engine out uh, because I don't want it outside. Then this whole boat is gonna go outside for storage. Then this thing is gonna come back in here and I can get to work on it. I'm gonna go down to Can-Am Fabrication, pick up the parts that got bent while I was at work this weekend. Actually, they just got made yesterday. And I'm gonna start forming the transom. So that's what's uh, gonna happen here right now is gonna get this stuff moved and out of here. I think it's just easier for me if I just do kind of a chronological series so you can kind of, it may not be that exciting, but so today's gonna be moving stuff around and maybe a little bit of fabrication on the transom, get that started, so here we go. I'm in Can-Am Fabrication in Marysville. That's where I took the pieces down to get bent. And I've been doing, coming to these guys for a couple years now with John here. Uh, don't do a lot of work with them, but it's a very cool shop. It's just massive, massive stuff that is out of the ordinary. This is quarter inch steel plate. And what is this, John? It's a, for a smokestack to a, Tug to a tugboat. Yep. And do you, most of your stuff is marine, yeah. marine driven in yeah, here. All right, so we're gonna, I want you to show us these presses. Like these, these press brakes are flipping massive. This one's, a, you say a 24 foot? 24 foot, uh, 300 ton. 24 foot and 300 ton press brake. I mean, these things are just flipping massive. I mean, the ramps on these things, what's the diameter of that? It's like a foot diameter on that ram. Like, and this is this isn't the strongest one, but the biggest one. The one down there is. This is just the longest one. Twenty four foot. So I mean, you could do obviously single piece twenty foot bottoms and stuff like oh, yeah. that out of this yeah. stuff. But yeah. there's also another pretty cool part over here. And you say it's like like the bulbous bow to a boat uh, kind of a thing. Bulwarks on a bow. A bulwark. So Which here it is over here. I mean, these are. This is just big stuff. Like my stuff is 100,000. <laughs> this is kind of a joke. Like, what is this? Probably 3 16 or quarter inch. That's quarter inch too, quarter inch. And did you roll this or was this broke too? Oh, that was rolled. So we'll sneak peek over here. There's their big roller right there. But their big mambo jumbo, their big press is here. And you said this is a 20 foot? 22 foot. 600 20, 600 times. <laughs> <laughs> like how big of how thick of crap can you bend with that? It all depends on how long, how long it is. is and stuff like that. And bend one, inch. one inch steel? Yeah. Holy crap. Okay, so these are even bigger rams. Like that is just I can't even that's like two feet across up there. Six hundred ton. That is crazy. And then so this is kind of funny. This giant, giant flipping break, that stuff down here, and here's my little my little parts that got done. Literally 100,000 aluminum. Yeah, not much to that, but anyway, cool shop. Thanks for the quick tour, but yeah. All right, well, just got back from Can-Am. Pretty cool shop, massive equipment that's way beyond anything I will ever, ever imagine having, but pretty cool shop down there. So the parts that we got, I've got the, the transom sitting here. Okay, so a little bit of math involved, nothing too crazy. You just go kind of back to basic geometry, but I'm going to spin the phone around and show you on this plate of what exactly I've been doing here. So I found the center mark of the transom, and I measured the width off of the, the plate over there where the transom is going to go. Okay, so that's my width. I'm not telling any of my dimensions, like I said. So that is where this is going to have the dead rise start coming up. So... I marked 20 degrees, hint, hint, this is not a 20 degree dead rise bottom. I'm using this as an example. So what I did, a little bit of geometry here, I measured out 20 inches exact and then drew a line up. So I essentially made a right, a right triangle. So I know this angle and it's not 20, but for example, here it is. I know this angle and I know this length. I'm trying to find this 
the height right here. So the tangent of 20 degrees is the height over the adjacent or the opposite over the adjacent. So a little bit of uh, uh, geometry there. And I found my point right there. And so then I've got my line. So using math instead of just a, an angle finder, because there is a little bit of slop that when you can see when you put this thing in there, it's not exactly right. And that's exactly why I do the math instead of doing using a tool like that. And the other thing I do when I'm measuring, I don't just blindly pull, you know, like a 20 or 20 inches off there. I will put 10 on there and make it as accurate as I can and go, go uh, up to 30 instead of just pulling off the end of the tape measure because I know there's slop in there also. So just kind of more accurate um, for me there. So this is it. I'm going to cut the transom and hopefully maybe get this thing tacked in here today and I'd probably be happy with that. Um, so here we go. So I'm going to show you what I've been uh, working on so this morning. So the transom is kind of fully shaped. I think you saw the basics of getting it uh, cut. However, things like this, the shape of the side here, those things weren't done. And all I, all I really did was, was took a square. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Took a square and it's square to this, uh, this reverse chine. So that's how I got those angles. So... That was pretty simple to do. But then when you're tying together some of these weird shaped uh, bends and stuff like that from the sides, it gets kind of complex. So I cut the sides long. These pieces are long. They're only gonna go up to here before it starts to transition. So I trimmed out a little piece and then I just use this as a kind of a template to kind of shape in here. So this is how, what I come up with. Um, this was a little bit complex. I had to cut a relief there and a relief up into here to get this, the top of this to bend down. So this is all going to make a nice uh, cap, fill that in with weld granite. You'll never even see that seam. So those were just kind of time consuming, little tedious things. And I just felt like having the camera running uh, on me while I was doing that was distracting me. So uh, you don't need to see everything and I got to find the balance of filming and uh, and getting ready to actually build this damn boat. So with that being said, here's uh, what I've got. I got the transom located and I clamped some uh, 90s on here. So, and the little center mark is also cut. So you can see there's a little bit of a gap but when you push down on it, see I got to get right over that little mark right there. I can push down and tack that together. And then, as you can see, there's little gaps, but as you work out, I'll put clamps on the transom, pull it down, and that's why I measured the transom and did it off of geometry, not just off of taking that, the, that it's perfectly bent coming from the fab shop. So that's why I cut those you know, using a little bit of math and some nice accurate cuts. So then the transom will pull and shape that bottom plate perfectly. So. I am at the point, I also, it's really hard to get your, your aluminum nice and cleaned up once it's welded in because you're trying to get sanders and stuff in there. So I took that over to the bench top and touched up with some sanding and some 3M scotch Bright pads. Here's a little trick. These are just all I use. Um, I used the, the sanding wheel at first, but then anytime you want to get this nice soft look on the aluminum like it is, 
You just got to sand in one direction with that 3M Scotch Bite pad and you get that kind of nice soft uh, patina, if you will, or whatever you want to call it. But it cleans it up. It's not as shiny as the, the brand new plate, but when you are... Um, when you're banging around and scratching, you will scratch it and doing all that stuff. So it's almost impossible to keep that original nice shine uh, finish. So that's what I've been um, going to do on this boat is just use that 3M scotch Bright pad for, for, for kind of that soft, dull finish. But anyway, I'm going to turn the camera back on the tripod and I'm going to tack that uh, transom in. After that, we'll probably work on the bow and then the, uh, the engine bears get those tacked in. And we'll, uh, we'll get going on that. So here we go. Actually, the first welds coming on the 907 Superboat. pretty successful the transom is officially tacked in i do it on both sides otherwise if you just put tacks on this size it's going to pull it out of square likewise if you put it on this side it's going to pull those tacks are going to pull it out of uh out of square so i do it on both sides this thing is uh, nice and square and then there's still enough just because it's tacked there's still enough wiggle room in there that the side is actually going to tie this thing all in and stiffen that up and make sure that that thing is perfectly square to the bottom of the plate so what next well it doesn't really matter but i like to get the bow pulled up when without any bracing in the boat because it's gonna um the plate's gonna move easier there's there's not gonna be as much stuff holding it together so i've, I've already started in on that with a little contraption i got going up there with a couple c clamps and a, a spring clamp kind of pulling it together it's not a, or a quick clamp, whatever you want to say. So when I talk about pulling the bow together, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm trying to pull this seam up and essentially kind of zipper it right up. So it takes them a little bit of creative. This is a, almost good enough to start tacking right there. That's, that's less than a 16th of an inch gap up there. But what happens is it takes some creative clamping and some maneuvering stuff. So if I start clamping up here, yes, it's going to pull this, this part up. But I had to put a block of wood under there, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is this is where kind of getting used. See, as soon as I start to lift, I'm just lifting a little bit up, up on this. That you can see that little gap down there starting to move around. So there's a block of wood uh, underneath there, and then you can also maybe like push down on a side like if i push down it's going to kind of force this whole plate to move so you got to take your time this is kind of critical see this is a there's a gap here so even though i'm i'm i just go like literally a couple inches at a time and i may have to lift up on this to get this perfect so right now and this is probably kind of hard to see but i could probably tack to about right there so put a nice hot and these have to be hot tacks or they're going to pop off because there's a lot of pressure on it so put a tack there, put a tack there, and then I got to work on pulling this plate up to match that one. So that's what I'm going to do. I can't sit here and film and do all that, so I'm going to put it on the time lapse and let you watch that.
I might sign off here. We're just going to call it good. Um, we got a lot done. We got the transom cut out. A lot of uh, kind of complex stuff there with those shapes. Got the exact dimensions of it cut out, laid out. We tack welded the bow. We tack welded the, the chine extension and got it bolted down into the, uh, into the jig. So I'm pretty happy with this. It's actually starting to look like a boat and uh, it's kind of exciting. So I think I'm gonna sign out. Thanks for watching. If I haven't said so, I know it's kind of cheesy and I hate doing it, but just please hit that subscribe button. I'm struggling with the subscriptions. <laughs> it's stalled out, 21,300, like it's not going anywhere. I'm very grateful for all of you that have subscribed and stuck with me. I feel like there's a lot that, uh, a lot of folks that kind of just wanted uh, a pathway to Cletus. I'm not a pathway to Cletus. He came and raced with us, but I'm hoping that everybody likes this content. It is what it is. Um, but anyway, it sure helped me out and helped grow the page and uh, get a little bit more reach out there to kind of um, show the sport, to show this awesome sport to the world. So thanks again, and uh, we'll catch you next time.